Hi, my name is Callie Chappelle and welcome to this video, Adobe Illustrator CC for Scientist. This video was made by STAR, Science Teaching Through Art, and specifically it was a workshop that uh, Leslie and I gave in 2018 for a group of Stanford students who were interested in learning how to make infographics about their research. So who am I? I'm going to close out of my video now. I'm Kali Chappelle, I'm a PhD student in Ecology and Evolutionary Biology and work with Tadashi Fukami. Research-wise, I'm interested in community ecology, molecular ecology, and chemical ecology, and I'm also very invested in science communication, science education, and science policy. As an artist, and you can see some examples of my art here, I'm interested in graphic design, digital art, graphite and charcoal, as well as pen and ink, and these pieces are examples of all of those. So again, this was part of a larger infographic workshop series. You can see our poster here. And after watching this video, and this is going to be in two parts, one kind of an introduction to Adobe Illustrator and one where I actually will be opening Adobe Illustrator and going through a lot of the different pieces of it. So after that workshop, I really wanted participants to walk away with four main topics. First, I wanted them to learn the benefits of making a poster in a professional vector-based program. I wanted them to learn the basics of using Adobe Illustrator CC. I wanted them to develop requisite skills to make a killer infographic poster, since again, that was the takeaway of this workshop series that participants of this particular workshop were hoping to get, as well as gain practical insight for making professional research posters. So a couple of examples of previous posters from uh, participants who went through this workshop series. This was a really cool poster by Daniel Friedman uh, looking at kind of ant communities as well as a poster by our own Leslie Koyama. And this was actually just one part of her poster and these posters were made in Adobe Illustrator. So before we dive into Illustrator, I first need to explain what vector-based graphics actually are. And in order to do that, you have to take a step back and think about types of image files. So there are two main types of image files, raster graphics and vector graphics. Raster graphics are what you're probably familiar with if you take a photo with your phone or if you've ever used a program like Adobe Power or Adobe Photoshop, excuse me. And the way the raster graphics works is they create continuous tone images and gradients. So if you look at a raster graphic and you zoom in a lot, you'll see that there's a bunch of these pixels. So examples of programs that use raster graphics are pixel-based programs such as Photoshop, uh, GIMP, or uh, photos that you take on your camera. And some examples of raster photo files or raster file types are JPEGs, PNGs, and TIFFs. One downside of raster graphics is even though they're really nice to edit and there's some really nice tools to, to edit uh, rasters, to edit these pictures, they actually don't scale up very well if you've ever tried to take a small picture and blow it up. Now, in comparison to raster graphics, you get another thing called vector graphics. And all vectors are, are mathematical calculations that form shapes. And the benefits of using vectors as opposed to rasters is they can be scaled up or down without losing quality. Uh, not listed on this slide, but they're also much more compact file types, so uh, you, can, can, you can store more information in a relatively smaller file. And some examples of vector-based graphic programs include Adobe Illustrator, which we'll be talking about today, Inkscape, and CAD. So why use Adobe Illustrator? Well, most importantly, it's the industry standard for graphic design. So if you want to create something in a program that not only works really well, but also allows you to have communication with other graphic designers, you'll want to use Adobe Illustrator. There are many online tutorials, so if you have a question or you don't understand how to do something, you almost certainly can do it in Adobe Illustrator. And if you don't know how to, you can find a tutorial online that will explain how. It's also optimized for integration with other Adobe Creative Cloud programs, such as Photoshop. And I'm going to talk about some other really nice programs that mesh well, that play well with Adobe Illustrator a little bit later in this video. And Adobe Creative Cloud is a monthly subscription service through Adobe that allows you to have access to Photoshop, Illustrator, and a variety of other uh, Adobe tools. Uh, also, Adobe Illustrator is optimized for a variety of things, but mostly for print media, such as posters, web design, and logos and graphic design. So this next portion is specific to Stanford, so if you're tuning into this video and you're not affiliated with Stanford, you can tune out a little bit. But how do you, how do you access Adobe Illustrator on campus? Well, first of all, all Stanford library and residential clusters have Adobe Illustrator on the computers, and Lathrop Learning Hub has computers with the entire Creative Cloud. 
Now, some biosciences labs, such as my lab, as well as the School of Medicine, have access to Adobe Illustrator through CSBF, which is the Computational Services and Bioinformatics Facility. However, that Adobe Illustrator that is free to download is the, not the Adobe uh, Creative Cloud version, but um, Adobe Illustrator CS6, which is one iteration older. CS6, which is the version of Adobe Illustrator I actually learned originally, is not that much different from the Creative Cloud, but there are some minor differences. Other programs may provide Adobe Illustrator for free, uh, but I'm, since I'm in the biosciences, I'm not really sure. Uh, and finally, if you want to purchase Adobe Creative Cloud, it is $19.99 a month for the first year if you are a student. Now, let's say that you don't want to shell out the cash for Adobe Illustrator. There are some other vector-based alternatives. The first one, the most familiar to most scientists, is Microsoft PowerPoint, which is free with Microsoft 365 accounts. And you can do most of the things that you'd want to do in Microsoft PowerPoint, except for making more complicated shapes, uh, as well as some other tools that are important for making infographics, although not as important if you just need to make a regular science poster. Keynote, which is free for Mac users, and Inkscape, which is a free, open source software and is compatible with Linux. So some graphic design resources, I'm just gonna leave this up here for these vector-based programs are here. There are a variety of other really great resources. These are just some that I found quickly that might be a good starting point. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about were some other apps that were, in that were good for integrating with Adobe Illustrator. And you can see that these are all Adobe apps. Um, there's some that are specific for raster images, or in, um, and you'll see what I mean by that in a second, as well as some that are specific for using drawing tablets. So the th three raster image programs that I want to point out are Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Color, and Adobe Capture. Adobe Photoshop is an app or program that you download for your computer. We just talked about it. It's part of the Creative Cloud. And it's used to generate and edit high-quality raster images. You're probably familiar with this for if you're a photographer, or if you just do a lot of stuff with photos, you'll use Photoshop. Makes sense. Adobe Color is another one that I wanted to point out, which is a website, uh, so just Google Adobe Color CC, and it's a website that allows you to generate color palettes. And finally, Adobe Capture, which is an app that I really like. It's for the phone, and it allows you to create vector images and color palettes from photos on your phone and export them to Adobe Illustrator. So I uh, watch a second, I'm gonna actually clip, edit in a quick clip uh, about how to use Adobe Capture. Um, but I just want to finish going through this slide. The other thing I wanted to point out, if you have a drawing tablet such as, as an iPad or a Wacom tablet, you can use Adobe Draw where you actually can use a stylus to draw vector images on that tablet and then export them to Adobe Illustrator. And some of these images here you can see in the background are things that I actually drew on an iPad and exported into Adobe Illustrator. So even though these look really nice, they look like they could be raster images, they are actually vectors that were drawn using a specific vector drawing app. So I hope this video was helpful to you and stay tuned because I'm going to add a couple of clips about how to use Adobe Capture as well as Adobe Draw. All right, so now I want to show you how to use Adobe Capture. This is an app for your phone. So I'm going to click on Adobe Capture and this is the inside of the app. So there's a bunch of different options, shape, type, color, materials, patterns, etc. I'm going to start with type. So type allows you to take a picture of type or a font in the real world and it will actually search for other fonts that look like the font that you just took a picture of. So I'm going to open this and just reminding that it only works for English font. So now you can see it's accessed my camera and you're looking around. So this is my immediate area. So let's say that I want to look for a font that's here on this calendar of mine. So what I can do is I can align one line of the text above and then take a picture. And then you get this blue box and I'm just going to uh, shape the blue box around the font that I want and then hit OK, hit this check and it will search for other fonts that look like the font that you just took a picture of. It does a pretty good job. And let's say that I don't like Hummingbird Regular or Hummingbird Bold. I like this one, Alana Regular. I can hit Save, and then I can save it to my Creative Cloud library. So I'm gonna hit Save. All right, so now it shows up on the app that I've saved this font, Alana Regular. Now let's take a look at what uh, colors do. So what colors does is it allows you to take a picture of something and create a color palette based off of what you took a picture of. So I'm going to do this and you can see it's accessed my uh, camera once again and I can make create a bunch of color palettes based off of things that are in my field of view. So let's say that I want to do this, this teacup. I can situate this in front of the teacup and it will grab colors from the teacup. 
very cool. So let's say that I want to do a, oh, I just uh, froze it. So let's say that I want to do something like this cutout, this red cutout. You can see it takes a palette for that. Let's say I want to do the, uh, this calendar, it will do that. Let's say I want to do this uh, amino acid poster that I painted a long time ago that's so nerdy. I know I'm really showing my nerdiness here. I can do that as well. I could uh, do my lamp, etc. So that is how to do Adobe. Uh, this is how to do the color palette. And then finally, shapes. I think this is actually the coolest thing that uh, this app can do is so it also um, will access your camera, but it will just turn everything that your camera sees into a vectorized shape. So you can see there's my iPad and Apple Pencil. Let's say that I want to turn this uh, paper cutout into a vectorized shape. I can just hold my camera over it. I can use this bottom adjuster to increase or decrease the contrast. So let's say that I want the contrast to be there. I can take the picture and then I can use these tools at the bottom to delete areas or smooth it or crop it, etc. So let's say that I want to just delete some areas. Well, first let me crop it. So I don't need all of this extra space. I just want my uh, nicely made vector image to be about this size. All right, I can save it. Uh, oh, actually, just kidding. I wanted to do a little bit more erasing around the corners here. So of course, if this was actually going to be in a final piece of, of work, I would uh, clean it up a little bit better, but I'm just doing something really rough for you right here, just so you can get the gist of it. Uh, all right, so now I want to save it. I will save it to my Creative Cloud library. Uh, you can actually open it directly in Illustrator or Photoshop if your Illustrator and Photoshop is connected to the Creative Cloud, but I'm going to show you how to do this slightly more generally in case you're using, uh, not using uh, Adobe Illustrator CC, but you're using uh, CS5 or CS6. I'm going to save it to my library. It shows up right here. Uh, am I enjoying Adobe Capture? I'm not going to rate it right now, but I am enjoying Adobe Capture. All right, so let's say that I want to access this on my computer. I'm going to export it as an SVG. Uh, you can also export it as a PDF. Both of these are vectorized formats. We just talked about what a vector is. The image will export it as a raster. Uh, so I'm going to export it as an SVG. I'm also going to airdrop it. So there's my MacBook Pro, so I'm going to airdrop it there. You can see airdrop now added it to my downloads, and if I open it in Adobe Illustrator, then you can see that here in Adobe Illustrator, it's turned it into a vectorized, uh, into a vector, actually. So that's really cool, and I can go in here and actually go through and, uh, you know, and delete some stuff, um, clean it up, clean up some of these edges and stuff. So that is how this particular app works. I really enjoy it. And the next, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Draw. So just coming back to my, I was listening to Hamilton, don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> I am going to go back to my camera so you can actually see what's going on here. So um, just showing you my surroundings a little bit. So I use Adobe Draw on my iPad. You can also use a Wacom drawing tablet. I use an Apple Pencil. And so next, you're going to be seeing the screen of my iPad. And it's just going to be me drawing on it, either using my finger or using this Apple Pencil. And so stay tuned. And we'll be going there right now. All right, so now as I promised, you're looking at my iPad screen. And I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Draw. So I'm going to open up the app and you can see here's a bunch of projects that I've already worked on in Adobe Draw, but I'm going to start a new one. Uh, and there's a bunch of different formats you can use. I'm just going to choose uh, iPad since I'm drawing this on an iPad. And you can see that there's a bunch of different brushes that I can use. And again, as a reminder, I'm drawing with an Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro. And if I go into one of these brushes, there's a bunch of different settings. You can change things like size. So you can see uh, this is uh, this is adjusted for how hard I'm pressing on the screen. So if I press really hard, it's wide. If I press really lightly, it's very narrow. Uh, I can also, in if I let's say if I increase the size, if I press really hard, now it's really wide. If I press just a little bit, it's really narrow, but it's slightly wider in both cases than before I adjusted the size. You can adjust the opacity. That just means the opposite of transparency. Uh, and I can also adjust the color. So let's say I want red. I have it red now and uh, let's say I put the opacity back to 100 uh, you can see that I have red now let's say that I want to draw for example over an image uh, let's say that I want to draw over a teacup well I can go back and erase all of the stuff that I already drew and watch I can also make the eraser really big uh, so I'm just gonna erase 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 
Alternatively, if I don't want to erase this, what I can do is I can actually turn off the ability to see the layer by clicking on uh, the draw layer and then just clicking the eye so you can no longer see it and just creating a new layer. So now I want to create a layer that is an image. So I'm going to click on image layer and I'm going to take a photo. So now it's accessing the uh, camera on my iPad and let's say that I want to draw this teacup. So I'm going to take a picture of the teacup like that. I'm going to choose to use this photo and it will insert the picture of the teacup that I just took on my iPad onto this drawing canvas. And let's say that I want to, let's see, I just want to size it, right, just like that. All right, so I'm gonna hit done. Now let's say that I want to draw on top of the teacup. I'm gonna create a draw layer on top of the image of the teacup. And now I'm going to take my brush and draw. But let's say that I don't want this to be just any drawing. I really want it to be the same color as the teacup. What I can do is, push down on the color option and it brings up this which anything that's in the crosshairs it will select the color of so let's say that i really want it to be the color of the tea that's inside of my teacup i can select that color and now you can see that if i draw it will be the color of that tea uh, so i'm just going to quickly draw around the teacup so you can see how this works all right and now let's say that I just want the outside of that teacup. So what I can do is I, just like before, I can go to the picture image layer, I can turn off it so I can no longer see it, and now all we have left is the nice teacup that I drew around. So what I can do is I can now uh, export it to Adobe Illustrator. So if I click on this and I went back to Adobe Illustrator on my computer, assuming that I, they were both linked to the same Creative Cloud account, I'd be able to access this as a vector, which is really cool or I can just save it. So I can share it as an image, for example, uh, and then I can uh, save that image on my iPad, I can airdrop it to my computer, for example, and then it will open uh, as a, um, well, it will open as a raster image file, um, and it will include this background. If I wanted to export it as a raster PNG, but I didn't want the background, I can just uh, take the, um, I can make invisible the background layer, so now it will everything except for this dry, uh, except for these lines will be uh, transparent. Or I can export it as a PDF by saving it to the Creative Lab, the Creative Cloud as a PDF. Uh, another thing that's really cool is you can do a time lapse, so it actually automatically creates a video of everything that you drew. So that was really fast, everything that we did, um, and this works really, really well. So again, if you directly export it. Uh, to Adobe Illustrator. It will open it in Adobe Illustrator and this will be a vector if you export it as anything that's not a, a PDF, so a PSD file, or as an image, then it will be exported as a raster. Hopefully this was helpful and stay tuned to watch the next episode of this video where I actually will be in Adobe Illustrator showing you how to create a variety of things. Thank you.